What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Unfortunately, I don't have a proper landscape photography adventure for you this week, uh, but I do want to tell you about a couple exciting projects that I've been working on. So one of the projects I'm working on is with Jim from Vintage Illumination Photography here in Michigan in the United States, and the other is with Dave from Let's Click Photography over in England. But I don't want to give the details of our collaborations away. Uh, they've been fun, exciting projects to work on, and we're all really looking forward to getting those videos out to you here in the next couple weeks. We ran into some uh, weather related issues really on both sides of the pond and I ran into some technical difficulties, mainly with the death of my, uh, my Sony ZV-1, but more to come on that. But yeah, we're really looking forward to getting those videos out to you, hopefully here in the next couple weeks. Now I definitely want to stay consistent on releasing a new video every Monday morning, but since those collaboration projects aren't quite finished yet, I'm going to do a what's in my bag for 2020 video. That way you can see what kind of camera gear that I'm currently using. Now the first thing people usually show you in these kind of videos is the actual camera bag itself. And I don't want to do that because I don't really like my camera bag that much. Well, I shouldn't say I don't like it. It's just not big enough. It's made by Low Pro, and I don't remember the make or the model of it, but it's just too small. Um, so I'm definitely in the market for a bigger bag with a lot of cool compartments, but not overly big where it doesn't fit the size requirements to take it onto an airplane. So if you have any suggestions on a great bag, uh, leave it in the comment below. That way I know what to go looking for. Now I should tell you before I get too far into this video, I'm not an overly technical guy. I don't know all the specs. I know what the camera does. I know how to use the functions, but when it comes down to those small, minute technical details, I'm not your guy. All right, so the camera that I use for landscape photography is the Sony a7R 3 It's a 42 megapixel camera. And uh, that's really why I bought it because, you know, if I want to blow up a print to, you know, nice large size, it, absolutely no problem with 42 megapixels. The lens that I have on it right now is generally my favorite lens, which is the Sony 16 to 35 millimeter Barrio Tessar FE. Now, it's not the G Master lens, but it's still a really good lens. And it, usually here in Florida, I go with a uh, wide angle lens because generally I have a, you know, like a big pier in front of me or a jetty, but I'm also trying to capture that beautiful Florida sunrise that we get. So Sony a7R 3 and the Sony 16 to 35 Vario Tessar Zeiss FE. I think I got all that right. Now my other camera, I don't generally carry in my bag with me, but it's the Sony a7 III. Now that's a 24 megapixel camera and what I use that for is mainly portrait work. Uh, to me, it seems like 24 megapixels is just plenty for portraits. I haven't taken many portraits lately because of COVID, but I know we've been saying it for months now, but when this is all over, hopefully we can get back to taking portraits of people. The lens though on it is the Sony 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens and it's absolutely a beast. It is just an amazing lens. The bokeh or the background blur on it is insane. Unfortunately, I haven't had too much opportunity to use it because I got it right before COVID hit. So I'm really looking forward to getting back out there and doing some more portraits and uh, using this lens because it is amazing. All right, so as far as long lenses go, I use the Sony 70 to 300. I'm not sure if it's a G Master lens or not. It does say G on it, but I don't know if it is or isn't, and really I don't care. It's a fantastic lens. Generally, I use it here in Florida for maybe zooming in at the end of a pier where you got the sun rising right behind it, kind of getting that compression, making the sun look a lot bigger than it actually is. I can't wait to travel with it and maybe take it to the mountains and really focus in on you know, maybe smaller aspects of the landscape as opposed to shooting big wide vistas. Yeah, Sony 7300, nice lens. All right, in my bag, I also have the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Before I got the Sony ZV-1, this was what I was doing all of my uh, vlogs on. It's a great camera, great stabilization. Right now, I'm generally just using it for time lapses, but yeah, it, it's been a great camera. I saw that they released, or are getting ready to release the uh, Hero 9 Black, so I may check that out and upgrade this, but yeah, the uh, Hero 7 Black has been an absolutely fantastic little camera. All right, so for me, one of the best parts of living in Florida is the amazing thunderstorms that we have um, between April and October. We get these amazing electrical storms that just produce like massive lightning strikes, and I love to chase lightning and capture lightning. Um, but I was having a problem capturing during the day. At night, not a problem at all. Set it for a 30 second long exposure capture the lightning strikes as it happens. Sometimes you capture multiple lightning strikes over a 30 second period, but I wasn't able to do it during the daytime. So I went out and bought this MyOps trigger. Now I've had only a little bit of a success with it because we haven't had, on at least this side of Florida, we haven't had as much lightning this year um, as normally do. Um, but yeah, I've used it a few times and uh, 
yeah, it's been a good little investment and you just uh, mount it to your cold shoe and then plug it into your camera and set the intensity level. If it's daytime, set the intensity level high. If it's nighttime, set it a little bit lower and as you get your lightning strike, boom. Now, one of the most important things in my camera bag is this little Sony remote control. Essentially, I just use it as a uh, shutter release. It's got other functions, but that's what I'd normally use it for. Now, I take a lot of long exposures down at the beach, down by the pier, and uh, this is invaluable. Uh, so you don't have to touch your camera, put on a five second timer, trigger the shutter with this, eliminate as much camera shake as you can, boom. So this is about best $25, $30 that I've ever spent. All right, since I do a lot of long exposures, one of the most important things in my bag are my neutral density filters, which I'm just gonna call ND filters because that's a mouthful. Um, I, I've said it before in my videos, I only use ND filters from Breakthrough Photography. I'm not endorsed by them, but I'd like to, so if you guys are watching, give me a call. I use the X4 10 stop ND filter, and I use the X4 15 stop ND filter. And don't judge me by how dirty it is. I just got back from the beach and there's a lot of uh, sea spray, so I gotta clean that. But these are the best ones I've ever tried. I used to use the Lee filter, the drop-in system. It just wasn't for me. Um, I absolutely love these. And um, yeah, 10 stop, 15 stop, breakthrough photography, ND filters. All right, two other filters that I keep in my bag are a polarizer that's made by, uh, you guessed it, breakthrough photography. Um, mainly just use that to take the glare off the top of the water. And then I have this Tiffin, what is it? It's like a graduate, circular color graduated filter. I don't use it anymore. I can do that. Basically, it's, it's for making your sky a little bit darker. Uh, if it's bright in your foreground, I don't know. I don't use it anymore. Um, I can do all that in Lightroom, so just a waste of space in my bag, if you ask me. Now, I do carry a lot of extra batteries, backup batteries in my bag. When I was buying my first Sony camera, somebody told me that the Sony batteries were absolutely terrible. So I went out and bought like three or four backups. And to be honest, I haven't experienced that with the Sony batteries. I actually think they have really good uh, battery life. I can go on a week's vacation and take maybe two of these, and I, I, it's more than plenty. What I do have a lot of are these little crappy GoPro batteries. I have like five of these. And it's hard for me to imagine that with as many versions of GoPros as they've released over the years, that they have done nothing to improve these batteries. Um, it's ridiculous. Although I did hear that the new Hero Black 9, Hero 9 Black, um, the battery life is going to be about 30% better. So I'll believe that when I see it. And really the only other thing that I keep in my bag that I use quite a bit is, uh, you know, like lens wipes. You've heard me complain in my videos constantly about having to you know, because of the Florida humidity, having to wipe off the lens in between every shot. Um, I also keep a lot of these little Nikon lens wipes. These come in handy when I'm down by the ocean, and especially when we're having rough surf, getting a lot of sea spray all over the camera lens. This won't take that sea spray off, it just kind of smears it, but this actually does a pretty good job. You clean it with this, wipe it dry with this, boom. So I follow this photographer who lives down in Australia. His name is Ben. I don't want to pronounce his last name because I'm afraid I'm going to butcher it, but I'm going to put a link to his channel right up here. And I urge you to check it out. He's such an interesting young photographer. He only shoots in film and, and he's just, to me, and, and forgive me if I'm wrong, Ben, but he just seems like kind of an old soul and uh, does a lot of history of photography on his uh, channel. It's just absolutely fantastic stuff. He was reviewing the Canon AE-1 and it reminded me that somebody had given me a camera when their, unfortunately, when their husband had passed away uh, three or four years ago. And I had just kind of put it away and forgotten about it because I don't really know how to use a film camera. But when he was talking about the Canon AE-1, I'm like, oh my God, I have that camera. So there you go, Canon AE-1. Film camera, that's all I know about it. I've ordered some film for it, and I ordered a battery for it, and I'm waiting for it to come in. I'm gonna have to do some YouTube research on how to actually load the film, and I'm gonna watch some of Ben's videos to learn how to use it, or learn to use a film camera in general, because it's been so many years. So yeah, I, I had forgotten I had it until he kind of jogged my memory with his video. So Canon AE-1. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you found that interesting to see what's in my camera bag uh, for 2020. I definitely have some stuff on my 2021 wish list, but I'm gonna have to run that by the big boss before that happens. And if you're new to my channel and viewing for the first time today, thanks so much for tuning in, I really appreciate it. 
And if you liked what you saw, and I hope you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I put out a new photography vlog every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S. I also have a new photography interview show called Friday Night Behind the Lens. We've had two great episodes so far. Episode 1 featured Adele and Max from Warner Tate Photography over in the U.K., and episode two had Michael Leary, a big air photo and film from right here in St. Petersburg, Florida. All right, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great week. Stay safe, protect each other, and we'll see you again here next week. Now you thought that I'd be true Now do all the lies and shit that I've been through I've come to expect it from you I've come to expect it from you